Namaste. So let's continue with this Sri Kalotra Jnana. Huh? Ishwara continues, O lady of fair countenance, understand that one who is not able to realize the truth in his heart by this knowledge of spiritual wisdom known as Kalotra Jnana can never attain it even by studying countless crores of Shastras, scriptures spread out like the sky. Why is that? Because we don't see what is in front of our face. And we certainly don't see what is before us in consciousness. And why is that? Because instead of seeing what is right in front of our eyes, we have a collection of stories that people told us or that we made up ourselves that describe our so-called reality. But actually, they're simply lies. And because of these stories, we filter out the reality the obvious, the truth. And we cover it over with this false idea of who we think we are instead of who we really are. Because of that, we cannot realize. Huh? If, if we didn't do that, we could realize immediately. There would be no difficulty. So one who cannot see the obvious, plain reality in front of his face, doesn't matter if he reads so many scriptures, an infinite number of scriptures, he still won't be able to realize the truth. That's the way it is. And we see this happening again and again in life, don't it? I mean, really, in Tiruvannamalai, there's a whole industry devoted to bringing tourists from the West and exposing them to all this knowledge, and then they don't get it, and they go home. <laughs> to me, it's a joke. It's laughable, really. I sometimes, will, really, I, I literally sit there and watch these people coming and going, and just laugh. Because why? They're missing the obvious. They don't see what's in front of their face. What is that? <laughs> that everything we think we know depends on the thought, I. And the concept of I is an independent, <laughs> individual who is somehow separate from everything else. And this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. If you actually look... Huh? Well, first of all, what is this I? As Ramana Maharshi says, who am I? If you look into this question with any intelligence whatsoever, you have to accept the fact that this existence of this body and mind and all this other stuff is completely dependent on a whole bunch of other things, starting with God. See, if I, however I understand 
that word. If I am real and the world is real, there must be a creator, a first cause. And whether you believe in, in Christianity or Hinduism or Buddhism or Scientism or whatever ism you believe in, there has to be a creator. There has to be an intelligence that designed and made all this stuff. So in the Sri Vidya, we call this intelligence Shakti. Shiva is the Brahman. Shakti is his energy. And actually, the division into Shiva and Shakti is the beginning of duality and also the beginning of illusion. But what does illusion mean? Something you see that's not there. Like when you go through the desert, Sometimes there'll be a, a heat inversion ref refracting the sky, and it looks like water. It looks very much like water. But if you investigate, you'll find there's no water there. So both the person who has knowledge and the person who has no knowledge see with these eyes the same sight. But one mistakes it for water and the other does not. He says, yes, that's real, but it's an illusion. It really looks like water, but there's no water there. So in the same way, the person who uh, has knowledge looks at this world with all the different beings in it and says, this isn't real. It can't be real. Uh, just like the water in the desert. There can't be water in the desert. <laughs> it's not possible. That's the definition of the desert. There's no water. If there were really water, there'd be trees growing and all kinds of animals and, you know, a whole ecosystem. But to just find water in the middle of, of the desert is uh, not possible. So when we see something like, quote, individual existence, <laughs> we, we are seeing an illusion like the water in the desert. There is no individual, there cannot be any individual existence because this so-called individual existence depends on so many other things. See? Right now I'm sitting in a room and the room has air in it and this body just uh, took a drink of water. Uh, soon I'll have some fruit for breakfast. And so on and so forth. Without the air, water, sunlight, shelter, uh, without the parents, without other people to do different jobs and provide different things for the sustenance of the body, it can't be maintained. Not only that, it can't even exist. In fact, without this whole creation and all of its aspects, this life, this body, this mind, this experience is impossible. So you cannot separate. <laughs> this is like the dumbest thing ever. You cannot separate and say, this is an independent individual because there ain't no such animal. You see? Here's another thing. The reality of the world. If the world was real, it would always be there. 
and it would be always just the way it is. See, the, the three aspects of reality are that it doesn't change. It's always existing. And it's independently existing. Uh, it's, it has uh, no need for any support. And it's complete. These are the three requirements of something that is self-existing. But obviously, the material world came into being at some point in time. And then it went through all these changes. The scientists love to tell us stories about dinosaurs and the ancient past and protoplanetary disks and all kinds of nonsense. Who knows, you know? What we know is what we see in front of us. And what we see in front of us is always changing. And finally, this material world doesn't exist without a support. It requires the support of an intelligence, a creator. Whether you call that creator God or the laws of science, physics, or whatever, it's still a fact. For everything that exists, there is a cause. And without that cause, it doesn't come into existence. It's that simple. So, the other thing is, when we go to sleep at night, where does the world go? Where does this body go? When we dream, where are we? You see, you cannot answer these questions from the typical understanding, the, the typical um, framework or background of the conventional assumption of individual existence. You just, you cannot answer these questions. And these are things that people experience every single day. <laughs> so how can anybody even have one day of experience in this world without asking all these questions? What is this world? Where does it come from? How do I experience it? What am I? What is the cause of all this? And so on. If you're not asking these questions, it means you are asleep. And what has put you to sleep are all these nice bedtime stories <laughs> that people tell. Huh? They're embedded in our language. Every language that I'm aware of, and I've studied quite a few of them, has three-part syntactical structure. The subject, the verb, and the object. Hmm? Johnny hit the ball. Johnny's the subject, hit is the verb, the ball is the subject. So this, this definition, I mean, sorry, the object, the ball is the object. This, this definition or splitting up reality into subject and object and actions and all this, locations uh, and objects, separate individual <laughs> objects. See, this is embedded in our, in our language. Yet, if we study uh, by means of physics, if we study the actual structure of these things, we can't find a boundary. And everything has to have a support. Everything has to have an origin, a source, a cause. So, if we can't realize what's in front of our face, uh, just by looking at it, then it doesn't matter how many scriptures we read, full of all kinds of other stories. <laughs> we are still going to miss the reality. And this Devi Kalotra is just about the reality, what really is. See? What really is, is that there's, there's no world, there's no I, 
there's no body, there's no <laughs> Shiva and Shakti. Uh, there is only Brahman. Brahman alone exists, according to the Upanishads. And I'll take their word over common knowledge any day. Only Brahman exists. All the rest is just a story. It's just an appearance. It's just an illusion. Huh? This whole duality thing <laughs> is non-existent. It's impossible to exist. Huh? Because only Brahman exists. Nothing else. So... If you look at this with the eyes of someone who's realized it, I mean, really, you have to laugh. Because all these people are running around telling themselves and each other all kinds of stories that are just lies on the face of it. Because the underlying assumptions, the, the structures that are assumed to exist don't exist. The permanence of the world, uh, the individuality of I, uh, the accountability of the individual for his or her actions. Uh, these are all crazy stories told by madmen to each other to keep each to keep each other crazy. That's my view of the world. <laughs> so, this is not about what you do. This is not even about what you think. This is about how you look at your experience. And it begins by asking the question, who and what am I? And if you look deeply into this, and you actually see what's there and not tell some stories about it or repeat some stories that may have been told by others, then you immediately attain self-realization because the, the realization is already there. Ramana Maharshi used to ask people, do you exist? <laughs> and if they say yes, then he said, great, then Brahman is all already realized. <laughs> the self is already realized. Because this uh, awareness of oneself means awareness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. And that is the distinguishing quality of Brahman. Therefore, everybody is already self-realized. They just don't realize it. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.